In this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can optimize your contact page with schema.org markup. Let's go ahead and get started by going to the Structured Data Editor. Once in the editor, you're going to want to pick what type of data item that you want to optimize. For a contact page, there's actually a defined data item called contact page. So we're going to go ahead and search for that. Once it's selected, you can go ahead and click on the Create button to get started. Schema app's going to prompt you to name this data item. You want to name it something that's easy to find, usually the name of the client and then what you're optimizing. So in this case, it's going to be the Hanley Mortgage Group contact page. The URI is the identifier that our WordPress plugin, Google Tag Manager, as well as the JavaScript API will use to identify what it's updating so that it can pull in the appropriate markup. It's usually the URL of the page that you're optimizing. Now Schema App is going to pull up all the different properties associated to contact page. If there are required and recommended fields for the Google features, it will highlight those in the page. In this case, there's no required fields for Google, so we'll just go ahead and start with the basic properties. So you can fill in the description, so contact page for Hanley Mortgage Group, phone, email, social media, and form. The image you can take off the page, in this case we'll use the, the logo image since it's the only one that's displayed on this page. So we'll copy the image address and go ahead and paste that directly in Schema App. For same as, if you go over the question mark, it says that you can use it to reference web pages that sort of articulate what it is. Um, and so it highlights Wikipedia, but you can also put social media. So on this contact page, we highlight the different social media accounts. And so I'll just show you, for example, we can go ahead and add in uh, the URL for Facebook. If you had multiple different social media accounts referenced on the contact page, you could also list those there um, or delete them using the X. The URL is the URL of the page, and so again, you can just go ahead and, and copy that in. Now for the contact page, the most important thing you want to do is call out what it's about. And in this case, it's about contact information. And for contact information, schema.org defines a contact point. So in Schema App, in order to link two things together, so in this case, a contact page and a contact point, you go ahead and create a related data item. So you see this little down arrow, you click on it, and you say create data item. This data item is then connected to the contact page. Similarly to what we did when we created the data item for the contact page, it's going to prompt me to, to name this. So we're going to call it uh, Hanley Mortgage Group Sales Contact Point. Um, and then for the identifier or URI, what you can do is go ahead and put in um, the URL that you used previously. And then if you have multiple um, multiple numbers or multiple departments you want to list, you can use this hashtag um, and then some type of identifier. So in this case, we'll use sales number. Now we're not quite done because you also want to go ahead and type in the thing. Um, and that the type of thing that we're describing here is a contact point. So you can go ahead and type in contact and then select contact point. Again, contact point is what schema.org is defined for phone numbers and contact information. And go ahead and click OK. So you'll notice now that that related data item is created, but it doesn't have any detail on it. So we're going to go ahead and, and save this page. And what we're going to do now is click into what this is about, the Hanley Mortgage Group sales contact point, and add some details there. So we click on it and then click on edit. And now we're going to enter additional information about the contact point. Now, why creating this contact point um, makes your life easier is because it could also be reused in different places. Um, so if you're doing a service markup and you want to identify how people can get in touch with you um, for that service, uh, you can reuse this data item called contact point across those different avenues. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is contact type. Now there'll be um, Google is, is very clear here around like what the different contact types they're looking for. Um, and so sales is one of the ones that they're looking for. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and, and enter sales here. Um, this list will be available in future in Schema app, so you won't have to reference Google for that. The next is the telephone number. So uh, we'll go ahead and copy and paste that directly off our web page. 
and remove the brackets and add a one for the international code. Um, area served is, if we look on the question, it says the geographic area where the service or offer is provided. Um, and so in this case, it's in Toronto, and I've previously entered Toronto, so I can enter that there. If it serves multiple areas, you can again create a related data type and enter the name. So in this case, we'll enter um, King City maybe. And King City, what we want to do is, is use a definition for King City. So if we go to Wikipedia, and we put in King City, Ontario. We can use the Wikipedia definition in order to define um, what we're describing as a city here. So we'll go back to schema app and as this identifier, we'll put in the Wikipedia definition for King City. And then you have to make sure that you pick the uh, type. So here, schema app's telling you it's an administrative area or geographic shape or place. Uh, this is a city, um, so we'll go ahead and, and pick city. Again, in the type, you want to be as specific as possible. And so go ahead and click OK. Um, available languages, um, I'll put in English. If you have other languages and you want to add those, you can just do exactly what we just did for the city by creating a data item um, and then using the Wikipedia definition as that identifier. The contact option then is, is being able to identify whether there's an additional option for this contact point, such as toll-free number or hearing impaired callers, um, or you can just leave it blank. Um, and then feel free to add basic properties um, if those are helpful. So, um, you know, sales, phone number for Hanley Mortgage Group. Um, and then there's other additional uh, contact point properties here. And, and we do have a fax number. So I'm going to go ahead and look at my contact page and see that there is a fax number I haven't defined anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And again, clean it up with my international code and removing those brackets. Um, and then you can see there's also hours available, email, product supported, um, and then uh, service area. Um, again, for Google, you want to make sure you fill out those required and recommended properties. Um, and then again, make sure that the information that's on the page is reflected somewhere in the markup. So we're going to go ahead and click on Save. It's telling me that I haven't put in an option for the contact option, and that's OK because I, I don't have one. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And so now the details that I've entered are listed here. And then I can go ahead and click on um, About. And it goes back to the related or connected page for the contact page. So now that I've saved both of those, um, the markup is generated automatically, so that JSON LD. If you want to take it manually, you can click on Actions and get the JSON LD. And it will list it there for you. Um, or if you've gone ahead and set up the WordPress plugin, the Google Tag Manager or our JavaScript API, um, that code will now be automatically deployed to that page. So that's how you go ahead and optimize your contact page using Schema App.